Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and it's Dehydration Friday once again. Now, have you run into problems with some of your canned goods and stuff starting to take up too much space in your house? I mean, we're all running into that, right? You start storing this stuff and it's just taking over everything, right? So, what we're going to be doing today is, we're going to be doing some sliced potatoes. All right, sliced potatoes, folks, right out of the can, all right? The process on these has really been done for you because you have to peel them, you have to blanch them in hot water, then you have to put them in a cold water bath, put them on a strainer and let them drain and everything else, and then you can think about putting them in your dehydrator, all right? <clears throat> if you buy the sliced potatoes, as you guys can see here, and we put them in our dehydrator, then everything is ready to go. It's so much easier and more effective for you to do this because it doesn't take up as much time as any other way does. So we're gonna get these drained off, get them on our trays, and we'll get the dehydrating process going. Stay tuned, folks, because it's Dehydration Friday, and today we're doing potatoes. Okay, welcome back, folks. So we went inside and we rinsed our potatoes. We put them in a strainer and we rinsed them with some cold water and let them strain for about 10 minutes, all right? So all the water and stuff comes off of them and everything else, all right? Now let's talk a little bit about some food safety real quick here. When you're dealing with any type of food products or anything else, you always wanna make sure that you have clean hands, wash your hands and Make sure that everything is clean that you are using. You've cleaned all your trays and everything else. And then what I like to do, I use gloves. I use these a lot for like when I'm doing chicken. And this way here, you don't have to worry about it. Now, I do use these in the kitchen a lot when I'm handling all different types of meats, chickens, and everything else. We're going to get going on putting our potatoes on our trays. So you just start taking your potatoes. You can see they're already sliced. They're really good, you know? I mean, they're already done for you. So you just have to take and just start putting them on here. Now, I started with five cans because I wasn't sure how this was all going to play out and how many I was going to need. <clears throat> and I did put my screens and stuff on here. Um, I just like using the screens. It just seems like it just makes everything a lot easier. So we're just going to take and just fill these right up. Just like so. You know, this is a great way to save room in your storage and your preps because this way here, you're dehydrating these things down and we're probably going to end up storing these in Marlar bags with an oxygen absorber and that way there, <clears throat> they're going to last for probably a good 15 to 20 years with no problems whatsoever. You know, and you're basically going to have potatoes that are just like scallop potatoes that you would buy at the grocery store. You know, I mean, you buy the Betty Crocker uh, scallop potato mix, and when you open it up, that's the consistency that we're looking for on our potatoes here. So that, you know, they're ready to go. You can, you know, use them in just about any type of a dish. And, not to mention, they're going to save a ton of space. If you don't have a lot of space, folks, this is a great way to take and do some of your canned goods, like your green beans, your corn, your potatoes, and everything else. And if you dehydrate them down, store them in Marlar bags, or if you want, you can store some in... Um, your mason jars and vacuum seal them and this way here you know you're saving a lot of room and you can store a lot more food so I'm gonna finish off doing these trays and stuff and then I'll be back with the finished product before we put them on the dehydrator so you are you here to learn about prepping do you want to know how to survive any situation well you have come to the right place folks here on Survival Preparedness for Beginners, you will learn just that. There are so many videos and playlists for you to choose from to learn on just about anything. There is over 250 videos, 
and several different types of playlists for your viewing pleasure. To make things easier for you, because time is of the essence right now. Now, some of the playlists just on my main screen when you click there are my top five videos on my channel, hurricane preparedness, new to prepping videos, gear that you need to survive, emergency kits, storing rice long-term, long-term food storage, and many, many more folks. The whole key to survival is you being prepared and knowing what you need to do so. I would encourage everyone to look through this site. I am confident you will find the information to help you along your journey. My number one goal here is to help you all get there. So thank you for watching Survival Preparedness for Beginners. The journey may be long for some, but in the end, it will all be worth it. Please subscribe and hit the bell and share it with all your friends, family, and on your social media. Thank you very much for your time. Hey, welcome back. And we're all done now. We loaded up all our trays. We're ready to dehydrate on Dehydration Friday. Now, it did take a total of six cans of canned potatoes to fill up these five trays. All right, now they're all in single layer, as you can see here. All right, they're all single layer. They look really good. Nope, oh, now they slid on me. Just got to move a couple around. You want to make sure that they're single layer, especially with potatoes, because they they need that room. All right, they got to have room to thrive and dry and everything else. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about temperature and time. Temperature is 125 degrees. When you dehydrate your potatoes, there's a few different places that give you different times on how long to dry your potatoes. Some say six to eight hours, some say eight to 10 hours, some say eight to 12 hours. Here's the whole thing. It all depends on where you live. If you live in a hot, humid type of climate, well, it's gonna take probably a little bit longer than if you live in a drier climate and everything else because you're dehydrating. So the less moisture and stuff in the air, the quicker things probably will dehydrate for you. So I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna start at eight hours and check them. And at that point, then I'll make a decision because I want them to look like the Betty Crocker scalloped potatoes when you get those in the bag. That's what I want them to look like. So we'll see how they look at that point. And if I have to go a little bit longer, I will. And I'll let you know exactly what the finished product is. So this is a great way for you to try to save space in your prepping, especially if you're in a small apartment, a dorm room even, um, a small condo, a small townhouse or something like that. You don't have a lot of space to store a lot of canned goods. If you dehydrate down some of your canned goods, so like your potatoes and green beans and corn, like I was saying before, you can save yourself a lot of space. You can put away more food, not to mention it's lightweight. So if you had to evacuate in case of any type of an emergency or anything else, it's a lot easier to carry a few dehydrated bags of potatoes and green beans and corn and stuff of that nature than it's trying to take a bunch of canned goods with you. So stay with me because we're all gonna see what the finished product is here. And that's gonna be coming up tomorrow for you. It's just gonna be a few seconds, but for me, it'll be tomorrow because I do all mine overnight. This way I just turn them on, let them run, and next thing you know, they're all done. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Hey, welcome back everybody. And guess what? The dehydration process has finished. Now for you folks at home, it's only been just a matter of seconds, but it did take a total of 11 hours to dehydrate my potatoes. Some of them were a little bit thicker than the other ones, so they weren't consistent. You know, an even slice for your dehydration. So those took a little bit longer, so I ended up doing them for 11 hours. But as you can see, the finished product looks something like this okay now these bad boys are nice they're almost translucent i can almost see right through it i can see you no i'm just kidding but i mean that's what you want you want something that looks just like this and they're all dehydrated down and everything now i am going to put these in a jar for the time being just because i'm still waiting for my 
mylar bags and my oxygen absorbers to show up that I have ordered. They won't be here until tomorrow. So at that point, I will be transferring these to a mylar bag with oxygen absorbers. So we're just gonna go ahead and use our aluminum foil like we always do. And these are so much easier than when you're doing uh, the small stuff. You know, cause like the peas, corn and green beans, they all get so small and you know, they can go just about all over the place. If you're not really careful, you can end up with a big mess, folks. So I found that this is just easier. And we're gonna see how many jars we may need here. Since this was a total This was a total of six cans, folks. So let's see if we can get all these in here. All right. So using the aluminum foil, it's, it's, it's a cast me out, folks. It saves you uh, from trying to pour from here into there. Even if you had a funnel or something, because with the smaller products, you know, they tend to go everywhere. So let's see if we get these all in here. Yeah, let's go back white naked, folks. Let's shake them around a little and get them to settle down in there. Let's see if we can get the rest of them in there. Like I said, this is just a temporary process. You don't really want to push and break them because you want to have a whole piece of potato. So like if you were to make some scalloped potatoes or something like that, I think you might just be able to get them all in there. And look at that, folks. Six cans of sliced potatoes into one large jar. Now I'm going to be vacuum sealing this just like I did on all my other products. Okay, I'll be taking this inside and, and vacuum sealing. You remember to use your aluminum foil. And this way here, you know, it, it's so easy to pour in here that to transfer into there. Now, if you were using a uh, Marlar bag or something, it would be, uh, depending on the size, you may be able to, and the size of your trays, because every dehydrator is different. Um, like I did say before though, you know, this Hamilton Beach is great for the simple fact is all this stuff fits right in the dishwasher, and then it gets all cleaned and sanitized and ready to go. And when you do that, sanitize your bottles too. You know, get them, get them all done in one shot. And this way here, it saves you time and money and energy and everything else and everything is ready to go. So on that note, this has been Dehydration Friday, Dehydrating Potatoes. One of the main reasons why I'm gonna start doing a few canned goods is this way here, it takes up less space inside. So the products that I can go ahead and dehydrate, well, now, I'm getting those out of my pantry. You're getting it out of your closets, off your racks or whatever else. Takes up less space, weighs a lot less. And once I put this in a Marlar bag, you're talking that's gonna weigh less than, you know, a pound. I mean, not even a pound, you know, ounces. So you're storing your emergency food for your emergency situation in a lot less space. So this has been Survival Preparedness for Beginners. That is me. This has been Dehydration Friday. This has been Potatoes. And until next Friday, I will catch all of you on the flip side. And remember, start dehydrating, folks.